Right, so what I'm looking to do in this video is use Wings 3D to create a little Space Invader model. I'm going to do it in two ways. The first way is going to be the easy way and the second way is hopefully going to be the better way because I'm going to produce better geometry which depending on what you're going to do with your model once you've created it you will want a better uh, set of geometry. It, de it depends on the render engine really. Some render engines like Bryce for example are very tolerant whereas others can be a bit picky. So we'll look at that. First thing we'll do is we'll create the model very simply. So here we are in Wings 3D. I'm going to right click to bring up the context sensitive menu and we'll go down here on the right hand side and this little box here allows us to select options for the grid. So if I left click on that I'm going to enter 11 columns and rows and go OK and that should just give me enough space to draw my little space invader man so we'll just do this this is what it's going to look like so I'm just picking these squares out very quickly draw him in this is the quick way by the way uh, though both will start in a similar fashion uh, that's his antennas and there's his eyes I'm going to right click again and shell extrude normal and just pick that up there so all these are the newly created geometry that's been extruded from this grid so if I press space to deselect select the background grid which is the first object I created hit delete and that's created the model so it's fairly straightforward as I suggested so go file export wavefront object and we'll call this uh, invader1 okay so I've now exported him I'm going to go into Bryce file import object import our invader object go OK and give rotate him round this is whatever orientation seems most appropriate and move my camera in turn it round a bit and we'll just have a quick render and look at the surface of this so OK that looks a bit odd the shading on this is very strange and the reason for that is by exporting it at object format it's transferring some kind of smoothing data and Bryce has interpreted these what are flat surfaces as smooth surfaces. Now if we want to see this effect in Wings 3D uh, there's an option here you can click on or you can hit the tab key and you see we switch to a different shading mode and there you go a similar effect is occurring here so this is something we're going to sort out with our better geometry option so just hit tab to switch between these two modes of viewing and if we go into Bryce we can sort this out by editing the model it's grouped because uh, these separate these cubes here were not uh, connected when I extruded the surface these came out as separate objects because they're not connected on these corners so that's something else we could sort out by producing better geometry but going back to Bryce the edit option here for the mesh we can unsmooth the mesh and then when I give it a quick render it's going to look okay the only thing is that the corners of these cubes are really very sharp so that that's not not so nice for rendering if we wanted to do a better result we'd want to chamfer these edges down because you don't really get infinitely sharp corners well maybe you do with space invaders I don't know but let's say if it was a real world object you wouldn't want those very sharp corners the other render engine I thought would have a quick look at is octane because this does tend to be a bit picky and in octane you get a similar problem it shows up more if you change the material to specular for example you can see you've got these weird distortions because it's even though these faces are geometrically flat the smoothings are saying that they're in actual fact they're curved so you get these peculiar refraction effects in the surface of a specular material probably easier if I let's say make it a orangey color there you can see the effect better so to solve this in octane what you could do is turn smoothing off and then you get these well correct but the the geometry we're using again is a bit too perfect it doesn't look like a real object because these corners are really sharp so if we go back to wings now and uh, we'll see if we can we can just do a better job of uh, producing some nicer geometry than this so that was the quick way of doing it and you saw it was very quick let's uh, let's get rid of this so I'll just select everything and delete it right click again on an empty scene left click on that little icon on the end and we're, I'm going to use 13 by 13 and the reason for that is I want to be able to draw my little space invader now inside the grid without it uh, touching the edge so we'll do this drawing exercise again see if I can do it without making too many mistakes 
Is that too high? Too low? Um, okay, and I think I got it right last time. So there, we're there. There's that gap there. Um, and yeah, and the antenna. Is that looking about the same? Yeah, I think so. Okay, right. So the important thing here was the fact that there was going to be a gap all the way around the outside, so none of these are touching the edge. And what I'm going to do now is switch from the face mode to the edge mode. So it's a bit difficult to see what's going on here. I'll zoom in. Mouse wheel. Right click. And bevel these edges. So I'm going to bevel those out. Now the advantage of beveling these out is that these ones that were previously floating free when I extruded it uh, are now connected by these squares. So if I now select one of these empty squares and press I for identical and then just click on where the eyes are so that those now reappear. The next trick is to shell extrude this out as before but if I just use the standard extrude for shell extrude because of the uh, beveling the geometry is going to sort of splay outwards. I'll just show you that actually. So if I do shell extrude now and just do normal oh it's not splayed outwards. It's made a liar of me. Obviously I've, I must have put a tilt in last time when I uh, when I tested this because that's easy to do if you keep the mouse button pressed down you can you can when you bevel you can extrude slightly and things like that. Never got to grips with that. I think it's some option you can turn on and off. Anyway that would work or an extension to the shell extrude command if you have a problem when you've uh, beveled it and accidentally created some tilted geometry is to right click and then right click on shell extrude and then just select one of the faces that's going to have a normal that points in the direction that you want then right click to execute and then you can just do that this object's now all connected together which is what I was looking for press space to deselect everything select the background object the grid that we use to draw on delete that and then we can just uh, add some nice edges to this so already we've got some beveled edges as you can see we could do a bit better than that so select one of these upright edges here uh, left click to select it and then press I for identical and you can see it's selected all these edges now right click again and bevel that down as far as it will allow you then select the entire geometry so that's the entire item there and clean up left click on clean up so that's just got rid of any uh, vertexes that were generated here that were occupying the same space and then at this point you can get the edge tool select one of these edges here and then press L for loop I for identical L for loop I for identical and L for loop do that a few times until this is highlighted all the way around the outside right click and then you can bevel that down as far as it will allow so that's done that I'll then select the entire object and clean it up again and then finally one last thing to do here is select one of these edges like so press I for identical press C for connect right click and bevel and then just lift that bevel up so we've created a line here so what was the purpose of putting all these additional lines in to get to essentially the same state as we were before well, I've hit the tab key now hopefully you can see that this is looking a bit better and we can test this in Bryce so what we've done by adding all this additional geometry is we've helped the smoothing algorithm know more about the surface that we want to describe so putting these lines in has allowed it to sort of um, gather the intelligence that this area is all flat and these are flat sides and these corners although fairly sharp aren't that sharp I put the bevel in there so hopefully when we put this in the render engine the uh, the geometry will respond correctly and we'll get a nice shape and we'll also get some maybe some highlights striking off these corners which we can test now so file export wavefront object invader we'll call this number two okay so now I've got that object there we'll go back to Bryce here was our first example let's uh, just move that off to one side of the origin and we'll, we'll import the next one file import object invader 2 okay okay right so I had to rotate it inside last time can't remember which way I did I don't suppose it really matters as long as I can just get it turned around into approximately the same orientation so without turning the smoothing off this this looks okay so you could unsmooth this you could do the unsmooth option here and then you would be left with uh, sort of faceted corners if, if you wanted that effect which would work I'll just move my camera and you can see that so you can see that these are faceted or 
With a simple model like this, you can just switch between smoothing and unsmoothing. This alters the angle at which it will determine whether something was flat or smoothed. And uh, by modifying that, you can you can choose whether you have a sharp edge transition or not. That's a sort of Bryce thing there, which is very good. I don't seem to have that option in Octane. It just knows only about smooth or unsmooth. So there you go. That looks, uh, I think, better. So if we were setting this up with a material, I'll select both of them, give them the same material then. Say we go default grey, specular highlight there to make it look like a plastic. And then we move move the sun around. Oh, it's already in a position. You can see the difference here by putting the bevel on this edge and sorting out the uh, the smoothing issues. Then you get nice highlights that makes the object look a bit more realistic. So let's go back into Octane now. Here was uh, number one. So if I just drop in number two. Okay. So this is as it is. It's smoothed and I don't know that I can transfer the material from that very easily or whether I'll just modify this material. Okay, so switch to specular and make it sort of orangey colored like the last one was. Or did they do it in transmission? I can't remember. I'm not very familiar with Octane. So um, there you go. Like that. That's with it smoothed and then we'll switch smoothing off and you know frankly it doesn't look a great deal different in this case but hopefully you can see that it looks a lot nicer than the original model albeit that the original model was quite a bit easier to make so you have to put more effort into uh, setting this up to, and putting the additional geometry in but the results depending on your render engine uh, and I think in most cases actually will look better if you go to that effort so that's the strategy I'll uh, I think I'll just run run it by one more time then so what you're gonna do from scratch is right click and left click on the grid here on that option at the end so you can enter your own number produce a number of squares that's that's larger than your shape so it doesn't touch the edge because if it touches the edge then when you bevel the lines then they're gonna um, get, I see that would be bad because that this our line would bevel and then it would come out at an angle that might have been what I did last time so draw your shape on the grid making sure that none of the squares touch the edge so we just draw whatever you're gonna draw that's gonna be made out of cubes could be anything in this case it's space invader oops this antenna is in the wrong place uh, pop his eyes in there switch to this edge mode right click and bevel so just bevel an amount we don't have to be too fussy about that select one of the inner faces I for identical so that all are selected and then we'll just deselect where the eyes are now and right click and shell extrude normal an amount and then you've got two objects because we use the shell extrude so get rid of the original grid I'll just delete that then select one of these. Well, you, I'll show you what this looks like now. Actually, hit the tab key, and you can see it doesn't look too bad already, but you can do better. So, what you can do now is select these edges, I for identical, right click, and bevel maximum amount. That will have pushed some of these um, vertices together on the corners. So, what you need to do now is go for the entire object, right click, and clean up. So, that will remove any ones that are occupying the same space. Now we've done that, one of these edges, I for identical, L for loop, I and L and I and L a few times, so all the edges are selected, then right click and bevel, so you just bevel that an amount, then same strategy, clean the object up, just in case we've uh, created some uh, bits that are overlapping that could cause a problem when it's interpreted, so it's just cleaning the geometry up so that it'll be nice for the render engine, select one of these uprights again, I for identical, C to connect them all together in the middle, right click and bevel and that's the last line you need to add, so that's added a line top and bottom and there you've got, at the tab key you can see some nice geometry to export to your render engine or whatever else you plan to do with this model. Okay then, I hope that's helpful and useful and that uh, you know, you'll, you'll be able to create this model in Wings 3D. Cheers now!